All right, good day, hi, and welcome. All right, it's 7 o'clock at night, and uh, you can't see me anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter where I put the camera. <laughs> so uh, it is jam light again. I'm just going to get backed out of my yard here, and uh, yeah, shake, rattle, and roll here. It's truck, trying not to get sunny, struck, got a visitor. I'm going to get around him. See how nimble this little thing is. Right in the middle of the driveway. All right. Uh, oh yeah, I'd get around that. For sure, I'd get around that. Or can I? This little vehicle is a lot more uh, zippy and tight than I thought it was. Uh, that's good, I guess. Um, okay, so last week I uh, tried to book a gig, still haven't heard back uh, a date and time, so the short answer is yes, I will get a gig there, the question is I don't know when. Now, one of the things I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys, because I've played this game before where sometimes, uh, yeah, you book a, book a gig somewhere or you try to book a gig somewhere, but it always seems like the owner is always too busy to take the time to book you. Uh, and it's not usually uh, because uh, they don't want you or whatever. It's just sometimes it just gets so really, really busy. And, and it just, you know, the, the, the train never matches up with the station is, I guess, what I'm saying. And it's like you could be at, the, you could at, be at this person uh, forever and a day before they get around it. But then you, you start to annoy the person and they just don't book you. So you don't want to be doing that, right? So the goal is, is that you want to, you want to be persistent. And uh, you want to uh, make sure that the, they remember to book you, but you don't want to be so annoying that uh, you know you you, uh, you just that, that you're just exactly that, just annoying, right? right? You don't want to be that. So what you want to do instead is uh, basically. Uh, You want to be so that uh, you can uh, get the gig booked and uh, all that, but you also don't want to be so annoying that, uh, you know, you, you just become a pain in the ass and then they don't book you, right? So, yeah, if that does, if you, you do find yourself in that funny situation where it just seems like impossible to get a booking someplace, don't hold out for it. Move on to somewhere else. Now, right now, um, I will be moving on to a different place pretty soon. Um, the jam lights, well, I'll keep doing the jam lights, but at some point I'm going to have to quit the jam lights and just start gigging, right? Uh, so my goal is going to be a little bit simpler. Oh my god, I can't believe how dark it is right now. Um, my goal is going to be quite simple is that uh, I'll, I'll you know, keep plugging away on trying to get this one booked, but i got to start looking for other places to play. Um, even if it's one of those, okay, well, you're going to do a jam night here, jam night there. Like, the first six months getting into it, what I would suggest is that don't take things too personally when you're just getting into it because what's going to happen is is that uh, you're going to find yourself in a situation where it just it takes a long time to get things started. Uh, not that long. you got to, you know, you got to, you got to just get down to it and do it. But, like, it, it, it takes a little while just to get things, uh, oh, my God. Why does everybody got to be 30 feet from your bump? Sorry. Um, I guess the speed limit just isn't fast enough or whatever. But uh, what, what, what you're going for is um, uh, pretty much, uh, I'm just going to let this guy pass here. Start flooring it while he's passing. Like, oh, no, you want to stay. Oh. <laughs> I don't know who that was, but I was honking at a friend. Maybe this guy thinks he's gonna stop and beat me up there. Like, what are you doing, honking at me? I just passed you. You're going too slow. Speed limit's too slow. Um, okay. So anyway, uh, sorry. What I was saying is, it takes a while to get it uh, like rolling. Okay. Uh, so you might have to do a bunch of jam nights just to get your foot in the door somewhere, especially if it's a popular place. Because it, uh, it's a great way, you've got to look at the jam nights like an advertisement of yourself, of your abilities, what you're capable of doing, etc. Uh, 
cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, you know and, and that's what sells it for you. Uh, there's other ways, too. Now, the other thing, too, is you can use the jab nights. Record everything you do, because if you get a really good night and everything just records really, really, really well, you can use that as a, as a showcase online. And when you do want to refer to somebody or somebody wants a, a reference of uh, some of the stuff you do, you can say, well, here's live at uh, such and such place. So they get to see how you are live. And trust me, that is probably going to be more important than the guy who sat there, you know, or girl who sat there and polished off a video in the garage, the room, wherever, and made it sound perfect. Because the thing is, is that, yes, you, you could, oh, when you can do a million takes, uh, you can always impress people. Uh, there's, you know, that's, that's the easy. Where it gets hard is when you have a one take to get it right. Meaning, you know, you're live, go. What, what comes out of it comes out of it. That is a lot different. That is a lot harder. Uh, because there's no do-over, right? You don't get a do-over. And uh, sometimes, trust me, you can get into and start a song off just the wrong enough way that it falls, it literally falls apart on you so quickly uh, that you actually almost have to just say, okay, I, I botched that one, and then just kind of like stop and then go back into it. You know what I mean? Like, or, you know, just like... Uh, I've had that happen maybe twice where it was just like, I don't know what the hell went out. You know, just everything went awry on me. Uh, but that, that happens. Uh, but that, it's like it doesn't happen often, you know. So, you know, pace yourself, take your time when you are uh, playing. Now, there's going to be something new tonight that I'm doing. Uh, for example, I'll tell you what I did with my guitar tonight. Um, you guys know about my pickups and stuff like that, so I'm using the D pickup because uh, the uh, reliability of the internal pickup is kind of hit and miss. Uh, so I got that set up the same way. Uh, guitar still has the old strings on it. Uh, still has, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's tuned and everything like that. So it's still the workhorse it always is. But the thing about my guitar tonight is I left it at home. Why I didn't bring my guitar tonight? Why? Because I'm doing something completely different tonight. What am I doing, you ask? Well, I'm playing a different instrument tonight. Tonight, I will be performing with my 200, 150 to 200 year, 100 or 200 year old, uh, we don't know how old this thing is. We, meaning the, me and the guy I bought it from. Uh, but it's estimated between 150 and 200 years old. My violin, my lion head violin. Yes, I'm going to whack the people with my violin playing tonight. Uh, that's going to, we'll see how it goes. I think it's going to go a lot more interesting than, uh, it's going to be interesting, no matter what. I mean, I could totally bomb, or maybe I won't even be able to get the violin into tune. I mean, I am taking it from its nice, comfy uh, home for the last past two or three years or whatever that I've been using it, and going to play in a, who knows what the temperature difference between my place and this bar will be, and hopefully the thing doesn't go out of tune. Uh, if it goes out of tune, uh, I will be using the house guitar probably. Uh, just I'm gonna, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. I'm hoping that everything goes well. I got my two bows with me. Uh, I practiced a couple of little things, very interesting, and I won't tell you what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, but there will be playing and singing at the same time with a violin. Uh, that's gonna account for something. You know, that's gonna account for something, providing uh, the violin doesn't go out of tune on me. If it goes out of tune on me, well then. I ain't got an open L of, of pulling off a, a fiddle tune tonight. But that's okay. Because, you know, if, if it goes awry on me, I'll just emergency divert to the house guitar. And then, uh, I got a couple of songs that I practiced. But uh, tonight there's supposed to be a quartet hosting. Uh, four guys singing. That's going to be cool. Uh, I have no idea how that's going to come out. You know, I'm pretty sure it's going to be excellent. But it, it's like I just don't know how it's going to come out. Like, that's going to be really cool. Uh, so, long story short, I will be basically playing a violin in front of a crowd for the very first time tonight. Um, other than, okay, I played in front of uh, my dad, my dad's friend once, and then I played in front of, um, you know, at the music stores where I buy them. Uh, yeah, okay, I've played a violin it's technically in front of those people, if you want to count that. And then, of course, my YouTube crowd bearing with me. Uh, some of you really hate it, some of you don't mind it. Uh, my fiddle stuff, that videos and stuff like that. Uh, trust me, I, uh, you know, I, 
not, I am going to ad lib quite a bit tonight, but I have something prepared. Uh, I'm not just going to hit the record button and go. No, tonight I've got something, uh, I think it's pretty neat. I think it, it, it just, it seems like it's coming out pretty good. How well will it come out on the video? I don't know, we'll see. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of cross between Steam Train, uh, Ghost of the Ship, uh, Hillbilly Sound, and, uh, oh my god, it's fogging up. <laughs> it's going to be one of those nights, is it? Got to keep the heat on low. I even got my gloves on because I want to keep my fingers warm uh, from the damp, right? Um, yeah, so it's going to be a cross between that and um, some kind of magical arpeggio stuff. Kind of Paganini-ish, not quite. I mean, I mean, I'm definitely no Paganini. Uh, but I mean, uh, as a as a violin, my as a guitar player who plays violin, uh, if somebody were asked me, well, who are your um, influences on the violin? Well, I'd say Celtic stuff is stuff I like, but the sound that I come out is like a, a Cajun, uh, Acadian sound uh, on a lot of stuff, and Paganini would be the only artist that. I try to rip off. Uh, other than that, I don't really know any songs on the violin, uh, other than some little themes here and there that I play around with, uh, like a top run theme and stuff. I forget how to play that. Uh, I haven't played it in a couple of weeks, right? I tried the Pirates of the Caribbean thing. I'm slowly getting it down, but I'm not going to perform it until I do it well, right? Uh, but the ad lib stuff, uh, yeah, that, that stuff's easy for me because, you know, Nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong when they don't even know what it is, you know what I mean? So, uh, but I got a nice little theme for tonight, and it should come out uh, pretty different from what people would be used to hearing there fiddle-wise. There, it's like old-time fiddle they hear there. That, that's what they hear. They hear uh, East Coast stuff, which is great, fantastic, and I'm kind of hoping uh, that... Uh, I can't remember what she said her name was there, but the girl playing the fiddle. You can see some of the video videos with her, the host, uh, the previous one of the previous hosts. They have a different host every week, just so you know. Um, um, but the the thing is, is that um, uh, yeah, she's a really good player. So uh, I'm definitely not going to one up somebody like that. You know, that that's just not going to happen. But what will happen is if I, again, you, 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 you know that somebody else is going to go up and they're going to do old-time fiddle the way it's supposed to be played, right? But you don't play that style. Well, you could try it if you want, but why not just give people something completely different? It's the same with the guitar stuff. Uh, when you got people that are used to finger-picking and new folk music spectacularly, okay, don't try to one-up them. Uh, give, give everybody something new. Uh, that that works really well. That that's uh, it's a nice recipe to do that. Trust me, I'm telling you from experience. Um, but tonight, like you, uh, you could ask me the question, Reg, are you nervous playing a violin tonight? Absolutely not. Not nervous in the least bit. My only kind of concern is, will the microphone pick the violin up enough, loud enough tonight, so that people can, you know, hear it? Uh, I think it'll be okay. Uh, it's the type of audience that, uh, whenever there's something like that going on, they tend to hush down a bit to listen. So that's kind of cool. So I don't have to worry about the amplification of this fiddle. Uh, there's a, the, the mic will probably, I've been playing in front of my mic the last past uh, couple of days with it, just to see how well it picks it up. So it won't be as, uh, spectacular as a, a properly mic uh, you know, or a pickup, uh, you know, uh, fiddle with a pickup in it it won't be it won't sound quite as good as that but it does seem to come out well enough and it should project to the back of the room well enough even if people are talking or whatever uh, they should be able to hear it well enough if there's just enough stage amplification um, and like I say the, the crowd there is pretty polite on stuff like that anyway so it's like uh, yeah I think I can get away with it uh, but I'm more doing it to show off the violin itself anyway, so uh, Why didn't I bring both instruments tonight? Well, what I got practice is probably going to take up Excuse me out of my 15 minutes by the time I'm done yakking about the violin where it came from uh, Some of the history on it 
Um, and, I, and I'm going to make it fun too. I, you know, like I say, when you're on stage, you are an entertainer first. You know, you might be a, you're a musician second. Uh, so the story is part of the performance tonight. It's not a well rehearsed story, but I, I kind of know what I'm going to say because I know what I, I know I know about the violin. And I, I know what I'm going to say about it. So by the time I get through the story, that's going to probably be about two, maybe three minutes right there. The first tune's probably four to six minutes long, and the second tune is, well, I'm just going to run out the clock on the second tune. Uh, if I come up a little bit short, that's fine, but somewhere around 10, 11, maybe 12 minute mark, is, uh, or 15 minutes, I'll be very close to 15 minutes just doing those two things, plus the little story. Which, uh, the story is what uh, is going to uh, hush down the audience. Because they're going, oh wow, this is cool. Well, 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 you know, they're going to get interested, uh, intrigued by this violin before I even play it. They're going to be intrigued by the story leading up to the play. Uh, my goal is that, uh, my, my fear isn't what I'm playing. What I'm playing is very well within my skill level. So I'm not worried that way. My, my fear is that the room temperature puts the violin out of tune. <laughs> that's, that's my fear. Then it, then it ruins the whole, okay, well, and, and I'm looking so forward to doing this. Like, it's like, ah, oh, come on, don't let me down, you know. Um, so I'm switching it up probably the next couple of weeks for the jam nights. Um, one of the things I might be doing, per se, is uh, bringing... Uh, like next week, I want to bring the 1713 Strat, uh, but I might bring my acoustic too. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do next week, but I want to introduce all my violins, so at least I can say I played on stage with the violin um, a few times, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, there, there's that. And uh, the other thing is, is that... Uh, I'm just going to shut up uh, the other thing is, is that, uh, yeah, as long as it can stay in tune, I think everything will go fine. Uh, I'm not worried about my uh, bowing too much. Uh, but I mean, with a fiddle, you just don't know what's going to happen on stage anyway. Because with a fiddle, it's like, uh, you can have the best fiddle in the world. You take it to a different place, and it just goes awry on you. It's like, uh, yeah. This is the most reliable fiddle in the world. You get, and it, it's like you get to where you're going, jinx, no you're not. <laughs> it detunes, uh, the neck delaminates on you. Anything can happen. Now, considering the age of this violin, this is definitely not a violin I want to be bringing to bars very often. You know, I really was hesitant about bringing this thing up. Uh, not that I'm worried that anybody's going to smash it or anything like that. It's just, uh, I know what toting these things around does to them. It's like you're driving along, everything was good, then you hit this big bottle and all of a sudden uh, your guitar is out of intonation. Uh, stuff like that. I mean, I've had all that stuff happen to all, a lot of I've, I've wrecked a lot of instruments just playing live. And not by abusing the instrument, just by sheer wear and tear. Uh, you take something, factor in something as uh, fragile as a violin, uh, put some age on it, yeah, you know, it's... it's uh, like, this just isn't any normal violin. This is a... I mean, there are other Lionhead violins out there, but this one's mine. <laughs> there are many like it, but this one's mine. And that's what makes it... Uh, you know, it's not like you can just find these things anywhere, nor can I afford to replace them. So, that's about the only thing that makes me a little bit uneasy. But I'm like, it would be a shame never to show this thing to the world. You know what I mean? When we share our our talents, we share our dreams. It's something I wrote on my Facebook tonight um, that, you know, I let people know, yeah, I'm going out to the Cafe 1870 to do a jam night. And uh, one of my friends is like, oh, Rich, uh, I, I went and sang there once too. So I want to do a couple of songs on there. Uh, I said, okay, well, you can tell me what songs you want me to learn and I'll learn them for you. You can come with me or meet me there. And uh, Not tonight, obviously, but uh, maybe, you know, a few, a few Wednesdays down the road. Um, I'd love that. That'd be awesome, you know. Uh, that'd be great. And uh, it's the antiques lady. Uh, my friend, I got like 10 friends named Amanda, but it's one of my one of my Amanda friends. And she, she sounded pretty pumped about it. I didn't know she sang at all, but maybe she just kind of like, she could sing like three songs and that's it. You know, sing along in the shower type of stuff. But uh, yeah, that would be really cool. Uh, I'm always up for stuff like that. Plus, it keeps me on stage longer. Where it's like, okay, well, I'll do my song 
songs, and then she'd come up and do her songs, and I'm still on stage a long time, you know what I mean? Uh, some guys do that. They're, they're like the kind of like the default guitar player for the night. And when that happens, what ends up happening is usually they, they just sit there for 20 songs in a row, uh, play, you know, and then they got like, you know, a bass player comes up, a drummer comes up, uh, and a singer comes up, another guitar player comes up. Then it's two guitars, then it's a, a singer and a, and a guitar player. Then the one guy just stays there, and everybody else just kind of, he's like, he's like, you can do time lapse photography around him, and, and everything moves but him, you know what I mean? Um, that's kind of fun, too. Uh, I've done that a few times, uh, but usually it's with people that kind of know the songs, you know, or they, uh, they're musicians themselves. When it's non-musicians, it's kind of hard to say, like, cause, like, some people can sing, but it doesn't mean they know how to sing with a guitar player or anything like that, so sometimes you, you want to do a couple of practice runs. I mean, stuff like that sometimes never happens, but if they're really, if they really want to try it, yeah, I'd say, okay, well, uh, you know, we'll run through it a couple of times, and you sing along with it, because, uh, again, listening to a tape cassette, or tape cassette, <laughs> showing my age, uh, listening to a, um, you know, a CD or an MP3 or something like that, is not the same as a live guitar, it doesn't, the dynamic changes, therefore, sometimes people who can't, you know, they, they know they know everything on the tape cassette, but if the tempo's slightly different or whatever, they, 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 they can't find themselves in the song, because they're not trained musical singers. They don't know about timing, they don't know about, uh, you know, how a song is really structured, other than that they can sing along with their favorite song, kind of karaoke style. So if a change is deviates at all, or you just have the guitar and you don't have the rest of the band there, they're completely lost sometimes, right? So, yeah, that happens too. But that's also part of the charm of going to do a jam night. Um, you know, so it's kind of one of those things, yeah, that'd be kind of fun. So we'll see if there's something comes out of that. Uh, but I am going to have to start... Whoa, look out. Oh, that was close for you. Raccoon. I don't know, fucking poor little raccoon. He's going to get squished running around on the road. Lucky I'm not a lead foot. Uh, yeah. Gotta look alive here on this. It's like, it's not even 8 o'clock yet. It's like pitch black dark. Uh, we're in October. It's um, at the making of this video, October 3rd. So, yeah, it's October 3rd at the making of this video. So. But I, uh, one thing about performing live with a fiddle, what, what's that going to do for me? Like, uh, again, I'm a guitar player. And I sing and I play the guitar and whatever. Uh, playing guitar acoustically, yeah, and they're jumping on the electric. Yeah, I can play in a band or I can play solo. I can do that, but what does playing live with the fiddle do for me? I mean, it's not like I'm going to be a fiddler in a band anywhere, but you never know. Sometimes stuff like that just falls into place. You don't know. Most, I'd say 90% of the bass players you look at are guitar players first. Uh, it's like, okay, I've been a guitar player for five years and I can't find a good band. Uh, I pick up the bass for three hours, and I, I got my phone is ringing off the hook because there's nobody else doing it, right? So some people just want to play live, so they'll divert to another instrument. Um, a good fiddler, yeah, a good fiddler is hard to find. Uh, that can play in a band. I mean, a good fiddler is not hard to find, but one that can play well in a band. The problem we have with people that play violin is most of them are opposite to just about every other musician out there. They're like piano people. Piano players and violin players tend to learn on sheet music. And I'd say a good proportion of the people that I know that play piano, they, they can't ad-lib anything. If they don't have sheet music in front of them, they have no prior memory to what they've just played, uh, it seems. They can only kind of, like, they, they can't, and I understand, yes, yeah, some songs are, uh, some uh, these uh, classical songs are, uh, classical music, are, you know, like, uh, really, really long, and to remember all those parts, yeah, you'd have to be, uh, you'd have to be very well-versed to remember these parts, and a lot of these people don't play enough to be well-versed enough to play uh, an entire, uh, an entire uh, piece, right? Uh, for example, like uh, Paganini's 24th piece, uh, there's... 
a couple of ways to play that thing that, well, different interpretations. Uh, Isaac Perlman plays it away, David Grant plays it away, Hillary Hand plays it a different way. Uh, but the longest version I've seen was Hillary Hand's version, which is really, really long. It's 12 minutes long. And it was almost, it's almost like two separate tunes that she's playing. And I was watching that tonight, and I'm just like, okay, uh, to play all that, yeah, like remembering, yes, it, it's spin-off themes of this theme, but remembering the organization of that without the sheet music in front of you is highly, highly impressive. Uh, so if you got somebody that can play like that uh, and remember what they're playing without the sheet music, that's pretty impressive. Now, take that person and throw them in a band. Uh, that's a total different animal. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, like that lady there again. I, I'm gonna have to ask her name again tonight if she's there. I hope she is because I, I really want her to see this thing. I think she will appreciate it for what it is. Um, but like, I mean, she's up there with a fiddle that's probably over 100 years old too. Probably passed down generation to generation, whatever. Uh, and she can go up there and kind of jam with anybody. She seems to be that kind of thing. But it's all a certain type of music. But, you know, uh, she's used to playing probably at the kitchen table with, a, you know, uh, you know, Uncle Uncle uh, Uncle Mickey came over and uh, he, he brought his guitar. Okay, well, let's bust out a tune at the kitchen table. Uh, yeah, so probably used to doing stuff like that where... A musician like that will adapt to just about anything. They're good at improvising. Okay, well, you're slightly out, but it's okay. I'll just move up a half step or whatever and, and just, you know, ad-lib it, whatever. They, they, know their, they know their job well enough that they can get away with it. Others can't. Uh, so where do I come in? Well, I've never jammed with anybody with a violin, playing violin. I've done it with the mandolin, and I've done it unrehearsed with the mandolin every time. I've never actually played the mandolin uh, with somebody who we both knew the same song. Uh, most of the songs, don't even ask me what songs I played because I didn't even know what, this was like songs, it was, you know, some was old time music, some was uh, just music I never listened to. And I said, okay, well, what, what's the main chord structure of it? And they said, well, you're going to have this chord, this chord in and whatever, and I said, okay, well, you just play a few bars, uh, whatever, and I'll just, I'll just wing it. And by the third, the third uh, bar, fourth bar, you know, I, I'm, I'm already doing something, and then, okay, after I see the first, uh, the first verse, everything from there just falls, falls into place, because it's like, okay, well, I know enough music theory to make this work, and I get the idea of what kind of tune it is, whatever, no problem, you, you, can, you can do that. So, can I do that on the violin? Well, I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. Would I try it tonight? Well, if somebody asked me, uh, I said, okay, well, I'll attempt it. Uh, we'll see what comes out of it. Um, because there's a little thing that musicians... Musicians are kind of scam artists, in a way. Um, because we're like a dog. Once we learn a trick, okay, we then just hone in on that trick. And then we just readapt that trick into different settings. So when we want to do a guitar solo, for example, Eddie Van Halen learned how to do uh, finger tapping. He learned it from either uh, Brian May or uh, Billy Gibbons. And he took it and he made something extravagant out of it. But then he could throw it anywhere. It's like, okay, well, as long as I know what the root note is, I can finger tap around it. And it just becomes this razzle-dazzle thing. But he's really doing the same parlor trick over and over again. It's just giving you a different flavor of it so you think he's doing something completely unique and different each time. Well, Paganini's the same thing. If you listen to the stuff, his songs... Now, the problem is, is you have different... We don't... We've never... Nobody is ever alive today has actually heard what Paganini himself played like. Maybe he's not as good as the people that are making his music. Maybe this guy was a total hack. And, you know, okay, he could write the music, but he could never play it as well. But he could make enough noise that people at the time thought he was good enough. You know, maybe, maybe he was. Maybe, I mean, if that's all you did all day for your uh, your whole life was playing an instrument, yeah, you're probably going to get pretty good at it. So I can imagine Paganini was pretty darn good. But you get what I'm getting at. Maybe the people that are playing his stuff are better than what he, you know, playing it better than what he could play. But he wanted to just write extravagant music to be legendary, saying, oh, yeah, well, let's see if somebody can pull this off. So he probably couldn't, maybe he could pull it off himself. I'm not calling the man a fraud, but I'm just saying uh, that, that could be the very, very thing. So, if Paganini can play it as well as the people playing his stuff today, 
uh, that tells you how good of a musician he was. But then you start to hear, when you hear a Paganini piece, can you tell I was listening to Paganini tonight? Uh, when you hear a Mozart or a Paganini or a, you know, a Bach piece or whatever, there's a signature in there where anybody, it doesn't really matter who plays it, they're going to start to sound a little bit like Paganini or Bach or Mozart or Valvini or whoever it's going to be or uh, Stop and Tom Connors, <laughs> you know, uh, the fiddler for Stop and Tom Connors, you know what I mean? Um, or going to sound like Cajun uh, or uh, Acadian music or Irish tunes or whatever. Uh, whatever it's influenced by, okay, yes, there's always going to be a, a variation of it. But if they're staying true to the discipline of what that song, note for note, is supposed to sound like, well, what that gives you is something completely different. What it gives you is that everybody is going to give you a variation of what the original was probably going to sound like, unless they alter it from its course. So what that means is uh, when you're playing, okay, and you're playing your own thing, okay, you can use those little parlor tricks that you learn from people, adapt them to your own, and when you're playing a song you've never jammed with before, let's say uh, somebody said tonight says, it's a really easy song, Reg, it's CD, uh, CDG type stuff, or uh, AEB. Uh, doesn't really matter. As long as I know where those are on my fingerboard, um, and a lot of, and if it's a tune that's arranged for fiddle, okay, chances are the chord progressions are going to favor the fiddle. G A D E, right? That, that's the strings on the fiddle. Uh, it's upside down to the guitar. But the thing is, is that what it gives you is that you know that when he's playing a G, you can just play an open note. When he's playing a D, you can just play an open note and, and, and do a little wiggly diddly on that. If he's playing an A, you can do an open note. Uh, if he's playing an E, you can do an open note and just do runs on the E. Um, that's the trick. Parlor trick. That's the parlor trick. It's when someone says, well, we're going to do an augmented fourth chord uh, in the key of D minor. Okay, that's when you got to know what you're doing, right? <laughs> you know, if there's an augmented fourth chord in uh, um, in, in a D minor, okay, or we're going to be just doing uh, all ninth chords or seventh seventh uh, chords, whatever. Okay, yeah, you might have to learn a little bit more, but if you're sticking with the basics of the basics of the basics, which most fiddle tunes, the guitar is playing, you know, complicated rhythms but simple chordings. Um, I find that a lot with the Irish stuff, where the, the, the there's a lot of quick changes between the chords, uh, but the chords are just your straightforward first position uh, to third position chords, you know, uh, first fret to third fret type stuff, right, that first position chords, which makes it easier for the fiddler. So the easier it is for the fiddler, the better the fiddler, the more that fiddler can let loose and do whatever and become spectacular. Uh, but if the fiddler's like, uh, you know, you hear the, the first fiddler, second fiddler, third fiddler, well, I'm more like fourth and fifth fiddler, you know what I mean? I'm the guy that's like the backup to the backup to the backup to the backup, right? So, I'm not saying I suck, but I'm telling you I'm a guitar player that plays fiddle. So what that means is, I'm not spectacular by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I, I can do enough to be dangerous, you know what I mean? Which is cool, which is very cool. And the other thing is, is that uh, what I look forward to is what is the response going to be to it? Because I know what I'm going to play tonight. Uh, very unlikely anybody in that bar has ever heard that. Why? Because it's not a classical crowd. In there. There's probably been classical violinists in there, but I'm not really a classical violinist. I know there's been a lot of hillbilly stomping. Uh, uh, swamp music in there. Uh, there's a guy who plays. Uh, they're like they, they're, they sound like a um, old brother. We're out now kind of uh, uh, kind of band. Uh, I forget the name of that band. There. Uh, there's a uh, man of constant sorrow stuff. Yeah, there's been people like that. So we got that 1920s, 1930s kind of backwater hillbilly sound. People have played that in there, but I don't know if they've played the hybrid stuff that I've played in there, that, or I'm about to play in there. So this is going to be new for people once again. And I look forward to giving that to the people. 
I look forward to see how well people will respond to it. Maybe they don't respond to it at all. And it's just like, oh, okay, well, it was neat, but, you know, not my thing. And that's fine. Then you know not to play that again. Because, well, you can play it again, but maybe not there. You know what I mean? You can try something new. And that's always the, that's always the thing, always trying something new. Uh, with the exception, I think, of uh, One Tune, Pipeline. I think that's the only song I've done twice there. Uh, I try, and uh, I've had the uh, sound man, Greg. I think he'll be there tonight uh, as the main sound man. Last week it was, uh, what was her name? Did I say Caitlin? It's not Kathy. It's something like that, Caitlin or whatever. And uh, she did pretty good. Like, she, you know, like she's a musician. She's played there. She seemed to know the, know the system. She got an okay sound for me. Got an okay sound for everybody else. Uh, so she knew the board. That was good. Um... But the uh, thing is, is that um, if he's there tonight, well, that, that'll be cool for me because he really knows that board well. So he probably has already had a few people go on stage with unamplified uh, fiddles before. So he should probably be able to get the um, the max out of out of my fiddle for me. But one thing you got to factor in is just the way this fiddle projects. Um, it really throws that sound out there. It, it's kind of a I look forward to the day I get to try it in some sort of a big hall. Uh, that kind of thing. That would be very cool. But what, I, what I'm hoping tonight is that this could be something that I could possibly add to a full-length show. I would love it if I could do, um, I don't know, four or five, maybe eight or, eight or so fiddle tunes in a three-hour set. Just to give somebody, give people a different experience. So it's not just a guy with an acoustic guitar singing the same song, old songs he's played forever and a day. It's a little more than that. It's like, oh yeah, and he whipped out the fiddle and he did this and he did that. Uh, oh, oops. Put everybody in the dish. My bad. My bad. Um, so what, what I'm looking at is, is if I can play the fiddle and sing at the same time, these kind of little diddly tunes that I'm doing. I mean, they're not super sophisticated tunes, but they sound really cool. Uh, so I'm like, okay, well, if that can get the crowd going, and my violin can be reliable enough to play live, that then there's no reason why I shouldn't bring it up. You know what I mean? Absolutely no reason why I shouldn't. But what I also look at is, um, like, when you're playing a new instrument live, like, I remember the first time I played the mandolin live, I was not expecting the reaction I got, and, I mean, it was way more positive than I ex expected, and then I was like, well, I bought it, and I just brought it out on a whim, and it was, uh, I sold it to my sister a while back, it had a little pickup in it, whatever, and I brought it out, and I just did these little diddly tunes that I um, made up on the spot, kind of thing. You know that. You know, I, I, I find a theme, but I never play the same thing twice. I think it's just because I don't know how to. Uh, but I'll, I'll say, okay, well, it's going to be around this chord, the chord progression, and I'll throw these little widdly diddly trick parlor tricks in between it. I'm not doing anything new tonight. That's what I'm doing. Okay, I got my theme. I'm going to run the theme four times, and in between that theme is going to be a couple of little parlor tricks to see if I can spice up the song so that when people hear it, it's like, wow, that, that was really cool. But yet, it's nothing sophisticated whatsoever. It just, uh, it just, it just, it'll work in, in, that, in that way. Well, when I brought my, my mandolin out that time, it was like, I did so good with it. I did, I was only planning on playing one tune. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go out and just play this tune live. See what, see how the, see how the crowd likes it. I, I expected people, oh well, here's a bluegrass thing and whatever. But because the mandolin was such a unique sound, I thought, well, maybe people will tolerate one or two tunes by it. Um, but uh, I don't think they would want to hear a whole night of just a mandolin. You know, because it is a pretty high pitched instrument and stuff like that, uh, and it can get a little bit, uh, you know. Oversaturating, I guess is the word I'm looking for. But do you think anybody would let me off the stage? No. 
dude, don't go anywhere. Uh, I want you to play along with this. What are you playing? Doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, you know this song, this song, this song? No, nah, well, I'll just play it and I'll jump in. You know, I'll do, I'll, I'll do what damage I can, you know. And, uh, oh, no, it's raining. Um, uh, so anyway, um, yeah, it's like, uh, okay. I go, I play. And I got all these people just freaking out. They're like, wow, like it just totally changed the dynamic of the night. Uh, because people, there's some people in there are like, what is that instrument? I've never heard that before. I said, it's a mandolin. And, you know, bluegrass people knew what it was. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where else do you hear a mandolin? You know what I mean? Like, mandolin is a weird instrument. Not, a, you know, because people think of it as a backup instrument. But uh, same with a fiddle. And then I learned a different concept of things. Oops. Given, there's so many people passing me right now, okay? I keep giving, uh, high beaming everybody. I'm like, I'm, my finger's gonna be twitchy tonight because of all this high beam, low beam stuff. I'm not trafficking tonight. But uh, anyway, um, what I was saying is that uh, people were um, not used to hearing that sound. And there's like, well, I'd love to have a mandolin, but you know, you can't just play that on stage by yourself. You know, like it's, it's not, it doesn't have the drive of a, an acoustic guitar or something like that. It doesn't have all the, you know, it's not flat and wide enough sounding like an acoustic. And I'm like, I started thinking about it, like a well-played instrument should be able to stand on its own. Here's what I mean by that. And this is the philosophy I'm taking with the violin. And I'm slowly honing in on this. Where you you could play your entire set, or your entire three sets, the entire night, on one instrument, with no backup tracks, no band, just you and that instrument. And if you want to sing over it or whatever, okay, that, that you know, that's okay. But the instrument, if you play it well enough, you will be able to let that instrument stand by itself. It will fill in the room enough that there will be no holes or pauses uh, and stuff like this. But then you have to modify everything you play because to keep a, a song going so that there's no, it doesn't just fall apart on you. This is why it's hard to play just with the electric guitar. You can do it, but acoustic guitar is no problem because with an acoustic, it's much more acceptable just to do a couple of chord patterns. You don't have to do leads on an acoustic. Uh, I tend to throw in that the leads and stuff like that. But then I take a, a, a parlor trick out of Jimi Hendrix's paint book. What Jimi Hendrix would do is uh, the, um, the the rhythm is the solo a lot of times. So the song doesn't fall apart. I mean, he had a keyboard player who was kind of a bass player, a drummer, and then him, right? So he had no rhythm guitar there. Now in the studio, J Jimi Hendrix could do whatever crazy, wild, wacky stuff he wanted. But live, he could not. He had to make it, he had to fill in those holes. What I mean by holes is when you, you have like a, a spot in the song where it's just like dead air. Uh, maybe it's not dead air, but it thins out the song so much that the song falls apart. It loses rhythm, it loses, uh, Sorry, I thought there was some bicyclists on the road. I was like, you're kidding me? On this highway? You're crazy. Um, but you know, you know what I'm getting at. Like, uh, you want to make sure that the song doesn't fall apart on you. So, I, I always... I don't know if I read that from Jimi Hendrix or somebody mentioned it that what, that's what Hendrix was doing. But I was like, that's a nifty idea. You know, incorporate the theme so the song doesn't fall apart. That's brilliant. Okay, it's brilliant. Now, with classical music, when you have like a 72-piece orchestra behind you, you can play one note all you want. You can clarify that note and do all these little diddlies. But when you're the only one there, then you can't let things fall apart, right? So you can see what I mean by you have to modify things to hold it together. You, you might not be able to play something that... Um, you know, like, you can't take that 15-second pause where the oboes would be playing. You, you now have to fill that in with your violin or your mandolin or whatever it is. Uh, and that's what I mean by an instrument should be able to stand by its own, uh, from start to finish, uh, by itself. So there are some songs you just can't play live by yourself. It just, it's not hard, not easy to do. But there are some songs you can modify and tweak. For example, if you're a rock guy like me, and you want to play... 
Leonard Skinner Freebird live on an acoustic by yourself. What do you do when the, that massive guitar solo comes up? You can't just wet, rip into the guitar solo. Nobody will know what the hell you're doing. It's like uh, all of a sudden the song just fell apart and turned into some ad-lib guitar solo. You know, there's, there's no backing track. Well, you can make the instrument stand on its own again, where you can use little little phrases in between the rhythms to make it sound like the guitar solo, but you can't do the solo exact, but you can throw off other things. Trust me, I've done it with that song so many times, and you don't need a six-piece pad to play Freebird. How cool is that? You know, like, and yet people just get, you know, you, you can keep the driving parts, the parts that people are going to, you know, headbang to and freak out about and dance to without having to worry about, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the song falling apart on you. Again, how cool is that? So, can you play Freebird on a mandolin? Absolutely. In fact, the way it comes out on a mandolin is pretty awesome. What about a violin? Don't know, I haven't tried it yet. But if I can find a way to pull it off on the violin, you, you better believe I'm going to do it. Uh, why? Because I'm that guy. I, I don't. I don't care if I mess something up. Um, you know, the first few times I played, I just want to see if I can get through it. Once I get through it, then I can say, well, this, well, here's where I can substitute this for this, this for that, and see what comes out. And then before you know it, like the tune that was. Uh, you know, like, I mean, like, uh, especially something like Freebird, for example. That would be kind of cool on a, on a violin, but that's a 15-minute tune if it's played from beginning to end. 15 minutes. How do you do Freebird for 15 minutes uh, on a violin? Very difficult. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so you can do it on a guitar. Uh, if you can figure out a way to do it on the um, violin, that would be cool, too. The other thing is, is uh, what about songs like, say, like um, 1812, Tchaikovsky's 1812. That's 15, that's 9 minutes or 15 minutes. Uh, it's, it's a long freaking time. Can you do that uh, on your on the violin by yourself? Probably, but would it fall apart on you? Definitely. You'd have to be some sort of very uh, magical type of person to keep that thing moving. You know, to keep that tune moving so that it didn't just fall apart on you. It would very, very be so, 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 so difficult to do that. Uh, but just think of what the crowd would do if you could pull it off, right? So we're almost to where I need to be. Tonight is about experimentation with a new instrument. And the experiment is this. Hopefully it stays in tune so I can get just at least get the show off the ground. Uh, it only has to stay in tune for, tonight it only has to stay in tune for about 10 minutes. That's it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it will, but I'm in a new room. Uh, this room is going to take, change temperature. I don't know how sensitive this violin is going to be. Um, so tonight. Uh, you know, I don't know, how, uh, sorry, I just got to keep my eyes extra peeled here because we're going to a small town. I don't want to hit too many potholes here. I, I, as long as the violin is still in tune, uh, when I get there, I'm okay. But if it's all, like horribly out of tune, there's just no way I'm going to be able to tune that thing in, in, in a noisy bar setting. <laughs> just not going to happen, you know what I mean? Um, I'll probably check the tuning out here. And uh, a lot of people are walking around the middle of the road too, so... So uh, I'm looking forward to this. I'm hoping it goes goes off without a hitch. Um, the I, I just want to see what the audience reaction is going to be to a guy playing and singing at the same time, because that you don't see too often. Where the guy still like yeah he'll play he'll sing a, a line and then start playing. Uh, you do see some guys that do this, but you don't see too many do it. Uh, because playing and singing is a, is a different animal. But I, it's one of those things that if you can pull it off fairly well, uh, you got yourself a show. You know what I mean? And also, too, I'm, ho I'm hoping the owner's there tonight. I don't know if she's going to be here or not. Because I really want to set up that, um, that you know, I want, I want a date and time uh, for a gig, you know. But I am going to have to start looking for other places to play. It's just the problem is, is 
uh, from here I go to town and that starts getting a little bit more expensive by a little more I mean a lot more I mean it's more gas it's uh, Tonight, I am not going to park the vehicle on top of the tree stump like I did and knock off my fender like I did. <laughs> yes, I did that last week. I knocked off the... Uh, it, it wasn't bad. Um, okay, that should be good. Uh, I, I didn't do too bad, but it's like... I got home and it's like uh, my, one of my front fenders is... Uh, half knocked off what happened was is there's a whole bunch of grass right there and uh, you can't see where i'm pointing at uh, but uh, anyway right beside where i'm parked here there's there's a whole bunch of grass so i saw this spot that was completely careless like, well all right it's it's like really close to the uh door well not super close to the door it's not a handicap spot or anything like that but it's close enough i'm like okay well why not park here right make, make it easier to get out of the parking lot later on uh and there's like a, a stump that's like hidden in the grass there and all of a sudden the vehicle's like on a 45 degree angle and i'm like What's going on? Oh, I parked my front tires up on a stump. I heard the thump thump. But this thing, uh, if you're wondering how these little CRVs are for off-road, I mean, it climbed up on that stump as if it owned it. So it's like, okay. But when I backed off, I guess there was another part of the stump and it kind of pulled the fender off a bit. So I put that back on and tonight I didn't park on the stump. So, okay guys, I'm going to check the tuning of the violin in here. I'm going to get in there, sign up. Hopefully tonight should be an awesome, awesome night. Uh, I'm very stoked. Uh, We'll wait for the footage, and uh, hopefully, hopefully it comes really comes out really well on the footage tonight. I got everything with me, all my cameras and everything like that. So, all right, have yourselves a great night, eh?